Welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. This is a special edition. We have the honor of having Bishop Athanasius Snyder and Bishop Joseph Strickland from the Diocese of Tyler together for the first time. Uh, I want to say welcome to both of the bishops and Jess Romero's here. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, our pleasure, guys. And I just want to, before we ask all these questions, because it's so important, we're always talking about the perennial teachings of the church and how we can help people fall deep in love with Jesus and Mary. I wanted, for the benefit of those who don't know who Bishop Athanasius Snyder is, even Bishop Joseph Strickland here in America, uh, Bishop Athanasius, could you kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and where you grew up and um, uh, so that we have a little background on you, please? Well, I was born in Central Asia, mm -hmm. in Kyrgyzstan, from German parents mm -hmm. who were deported by Stalin after the Second World War wow. in Ural Mountains for, for forced labor. And there, my parents were active members of the after clandestine church, underground church, with holy priests and martyr priests. And then... They moved to Kyrgyzstan, then they continued to be members of, of a clandestine church, both, and our entire family. So I grew up, I grew up in the clandestine church, and this uh, gave me for all my life, really, a foundation. I am thankful to God. And then we moved to Estonia, in the Soviet Union. There I continued my life in the parish with a holy priest who was in the prison before. Uh, and then we moved to Germany <coughs> in the end of 73. And then I continued my high school in Germany. And then I entered the canon regulars of the Holy Cross in Austria after my high school. And then I, after the novitiate, I was sent to Brazil mm -hmm. in mission. And then in Brazil, I studied philosophy and theology in a, whole, in a diocese which was led by Holy Bishop, mm -hmm. Bishop Manuel Pestana. It was in the Diocese of Annapolis, in the center of Brazil. And he ordained me priest. And I worked one year as a priest in uh, the Diocese of Aparecida, close to São Paulo. And then the superior sent me to Rome <laughs> to study uh, the Church Fathers, patristics, and I did my doctorate in patristics in Rome. And then I was elected general counselor of my order. And in 99, I was asked to go to Kazakhstan to teach and in the formation of priests. Uh, since I have still spoken Russian language, which is now used still in the Kazakhstan, and then in uh, 2000. Six, 50 years ago, Pope Benedict appointed me auxiliary bishop in the Karaganda Diocese, where was the seminary. And since 10 years, I was moved to the capital city as our auxiliary bishop. Wow. And I'm currently the general secretary of the bishops' conference in Kazakhstan. So, <laughs> Thank you. I love it. But, and now, Bishop Joseph Strickland, your story. Well, um, certainly much less dramatic than uh, Bishop Schneider's. Um, grew up here in Northeast Texas in a little town called Atlanta and uh, went to, to mass there at a little mission church, St. Catherine's, but it was never underground, never um, yeah. the, the kind of uh, challenges that Bishop Schneider faced, but a very non-Catholic area. Um, so that we, we were taught that being Catholic was the greatest treasure we had. Uh, six kids in the family, seven total, one had died as an infant. Um, so I grew up in Atlanta, Texas, went to the grade school there, just a public school. I didn't have the opportunity to go to a Catholic school until I was went to the seminary, the University of Dallas and Holy Trinity Seminary in the Dallas area. Um, went there at 18, was ordained at 26 in 1985, and my first assignment was here to Immaculate Conception Church here in Tyler. Um, and so I've, I've spent the majority of my life in this city of Tyler. 
as a priest um, and then <clears throat> as rector of the cathedral for many years. And then back in 2012, um, I was named the fourth bishop of the Diocese of Tyler. So I don't move around a lot like uh, Bishop Schneider. <laughs> I've, I've pretty much stayed in the within 100 miles of where I grew up. Um, but I really uh, appreciate the story. I've, I've read uh, at least most of Bishop Schneider's book on his story of the struggles. And I think what we share, even though we're from very different parts of the world, and I don't speak a word of Russian, um, we share a deep love for Jesus Christ and his church. Amen. And I, can, I think I can speak for Bishop Schneider. I know he's said similar things, but it's something we are willing to die for. Like the great martyrs we just celebrated, St. Joseph, I, I would hope to, in some small way, live uh, uh, in the way that St. Joseph did. And interestingly, he was, um, as we all know, a great, he, his life's work was for the unity of the church, and he was ultimately martyred for that. And it's very interesting. It just, uh, I'm sure that um, St. Joseph is very significant for Bishop Schneider because he was an Eastern um, Christian that came to the West and tried to bring unity and was ultimately martyred for it. But um, we just, the treasure of our Catholic faith is worth dying for. I'm not volunteering to martyr, be martyred, <laughs> but we need to be ready for that. Rather than yeah. uh, diluting the truth or backing off from the truth, the truth is glorious and it, it roars like a lion and sets us free. So, um, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm I getting, love it. I love. But uh, I'm sure Bishop Strickland, Jesse, and I would. Have I've been heard. talking to Terry too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Jess, wouldn't you agree with both bishops that that's true? We were willing to die for our faith. What? I mean, look at we're rounding third base right now. All of us are in our sixties. Okay. I mean, give me a break. Uh, it, it does, life is short. Eternity is forever. Jesse, before we have the break, I want to set the stage. You and you made a lot of these questions up for both bishops. And can you kind of set the stage why? I mean, we have a uh, we have this crisis in the church and in the world. Can you kind of set the stage for these questions, please? Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, Bishop Snyder, Bishop Strickland, you both of you are inspiring lay Catholics right. around the world, unlike virtually anybody else. God is using you in a very powerful way to, to raise up the laity, to pursue holiness. Amen to continue evangelizing, and even to embrace martyrdom. So I just want to say that both of you, uh, I call bishops the generals of the Catholic Church. <laughs> we are the foot soldiers. Both of you generals are are, uh, are, are, are doing exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, commissioned you to do. Having said that, we find ourselves in a situation right now where we have a state religion, a worldwide state religion, starting with the COVID-19 and everything else that comes with it, and the vaccinations and the mandates and the six feet apart and the put on the mask and the Pope Fauci. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then we have the one true faith, the Catholic Church. And right now, this is what's happening right now. We're at loggerheads. And so we're gonna ask some questions because a lot of lay people want direction. They want spiritual direction. So, Terry, you let me know where we're going to start. Oh, that's right. We're, start, we're, we're going to go. I'm, we're looking at the clock. We're going to take a quick break, but we can jump in. What I was going to do to set the stage is I'll ask each one of you a question. You guys answer. You can answer the question, and if yeah, the other person has some more comments on it, they can do that, but we can go right through them. So uh, here's the first question. We'll go with uh, Bishop Athanasius Snyder first. Uh, Bishop Snyder, what is your suggestion for someone that's given the ultimatum when where they will lose their job if they don't take this vaccination. And I, in other words, I, we get these calls almost daily from people saying, "Look, if I don't take this vaccination, I'm going to lose my job. What can I, what can I do?" And I'd like to know what you would tell them. Well, I think we have to follow our conscience, mm -hmm. even when we when we are losing only a temporal disadvantages to lose your job. Yeah. It's not to lose your soul and to lose eternity. So I think we, in, in our culture, even in, within the church, in the last 
maybe decades, it is growing a mentality of materialism, mm -hmm. of, of the attachment too much to this earthly short life. And therefore, the, the, the first Christians, when we, when we are reading the stories of the first Christians in the three centuries, mm -hmm. they were sacrificing their lives, only they were rejecting to put one grain of incense, only one grain, before the statue of an idol, or to, to, to make an oath on the genius of the emperor was called, but this was a kind of, not a direct uh, idolatry, but to honor the, the emperor and his mm, divinity or his, and so they were martyred. Not only they lost their jobs, no, they lost their lives. And therefore I think we have to be Catholics who, who can resist. So we have to resist and to follow our conscience and God will provide us even Well said, Bishop Strickland, uh, Bishop Athanasius, I got to jump in. We got a quick break. Great answer. When we come back, we'll have more questions and answers from Bishop Strickland and Bishop Snyder here on the Terry and Jesse Show. Stay with us, family. We'll be right back. I want to remind people the Spiritual Warfare Conference is coming up Saturday and Sunday, the 29th and 30th of January of next year. It's coming up quick. Jess, you got a minute here. Why should people come to this conference? Father Chad Ripperger is one of many exorcists, but he's looked at by every single exorcist I've spoken to as basically the pinnacle because, Terry, he's resurrected what's basically the Desert Fathers, the monastic St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Charles Borromeo, their methodology of healing, deliverance, and exorcism, which is taking the church by storm. Young Catholic priests that encounter this type of training, they say it's changed their priesthood entirely. He's going to be coming down to give a conference in Southern California. This is the top of the food chain in spiritual warfare. If you want to register, go to vmpr.org or call us at 877-526-2151. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. This is a amazing a show today. We have Bishop Athanasius Snyder and Bishop Joseph Strickland together to talk about how people can fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and his bride to the church. Uh, we are asking questions in regards to COVID-19 and other issues. Jess, our second question, can you bring it to uh, Bishop Strickland? Yeah, yes, Bishop Strickland, what's your advice for families that have your, their kids who they're compelling them to be vaccinated in order to attend schools? like California. Well, as really just following on what Bishop Schneider said, 
we have to resist. Um, and I know that's a, a great hardship for these families, and I don't discount that. But we are, as Bishop Schneider was talking, we just have to acknowledge that we are sadly moving into uh, the world being a, a totalitarian state um, where the freedom of conscience is being ignored and so many freedoms that many have died for through the centuries in this country and other places. Um, it, that's what really struck me as Bishop Schneider was speaking, that he's gone through that kind of totalitarian oppression in his childhood and probably throughout his life in some ways. We're beginning, sadly, to see that as a worldwide phenomenon. Um, and we have to, like Bishop Schneider said, as the early martyrs, um, certainly we we aren't required to, and, and we don't we shouldn't volunteer to be martyred. But we must stand for the truth, and we must cease the compromises. So, for those families, I would say, you know, get get together, support each other, and maybe do some some sort of a homeschool that you can. Because many people say, well, we have to work, but cooperate with each other, find other families that are resisting these vaccines as well. Um, because to give in just for all of us, are, I'm a weak sinner, we all are, um, but we have to be as strong as we can and then it helps the next person be stronger. That's how you resist these totalitarian forces. If we all just fall over and give in and compromise our beliefs, then ultimately we're not lo not just losing our jobs, but we're losing everlasting life. We're losing who we are. Yeah. We we're losing our humanity. So we've got to say no. Uh, the mandates are immoral, and I've been saying that. I know Bishop Schneider has been saying that. Wherever they come from, uh, no one has the right to invade our conscience and our free will and say you must do that. It's called totalitarianism, and it's pretty rampant in our world. So as Bishop Schneider said, if you, uh, we could lose our jobs, I suppose, uh, as bishops. I mean, it's happened before. <laughs> I mean, we talked about um, Bishop jo Josephat. He was murdered. He was martyred rather than compromising his faith. Um, so it, probably people think, oh, well, they're bishops, so they don't have to worry about it. But all of us need to stand firm for the truth and support each other. I guess that's the main thing I would say. It's a real question for people in California, I know. And the families that are saying, no, we're not going to vaccinate our six-year-old child. It's just, it's not even medically uh, intelligent, much less morally right. Well said. That kind of leads us to the next question. For both of you bishops, <laughs> you have been so outspoken, and I would say without any fear of criticism from higher echelons of the church, what both Jesse and I and our audience would say, what's your secret? I mean, how do you stand so strong knowing that you're kind of standing alone? Bishop Athanasius Snyder first. Well, we are never alone. Amen. When, when we are with the truth. <laughs> so we are with the entire uh, saintly bishops from beginning with the apostles. They all were courageous, the apostles. I mean, and let us see the first church fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, uh, uh, oftentimes they were martyrs, they were confessors. And, and so we are, when we are defending the truth according to our conscience as bishops, and uh, as Cardinal Burke said, we have to take, to make uh, account, to give account before God, not before, even not before the Pope of this, who is now in charge, or be, before our bishops conference, but before God. Mm -hmm. And so I repeat, we are in the company of so many holy bishops, 
of holy doctors of the church. And let us say, in the United States, there is the famous figure already mentioned, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who was also very courageous spoken. And so in other times, so I think, uh, and I, I remember a phrase of Saint Gregory of Nazians. He was a great father of the church from the fourth century during the Aryan crisis, where, where, where the majority of the episcopate were collaborating with the Aryan heresy. It is true. They were collaborating, the majority of the episcopate were collaborating or yielding in some ways to the heresy of making compromises. And so those bishops who defended the, the faith, the traditional faith, uh, they were the minority. And so St. Gregory uh, made this expression, God is not delighting in numbers. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Wow, I love that quote from yeah, Father. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I love the, uh, the name of Bishop Schneider, Athanasius, <laughs> another great saint of that same period. Athanasius. Bishop Schneider, I think you are our Athanasius for the 21st century. Amen. I know that's a lot to put on your shoulders, but uh, True. we need Athanasius. We need Gregory Nazianzen. We need, and as you said, we're not alone. And it, I think that's a beautiful reminder to all of us, for those Catholics out there, that are feeling alone, because many people have said that to me, yep. and I'm sure they've said that to Bishop Schneider. We are with the, we want to be with the communion of saints. And as we live the truth, even in this world, we are. At mass, we join the communion of saints in the everlasting loving sacrifice of Christ. Yes. That's why the Eucharist is so important. All of these issues uh, are so significant because they're all about being one with God and with each other. So I think uh, Bishop Schneider gave a beautiful answer there and a great reminder that all of us can pray about and reflect on that when we do feel alone and humanly, we can feel isolated or where are the other voices, but we have to remember in God, there is no time. It's all, all those voices of truth are presently giving glory to God, and we want to join them in eternity. So we have to proclaim the truth right here and now. Wow. Amen. Jess? Here's a, yeah, here's a question for both of you as bishops. What advice would you give to a priest <clears throat> who wants to sign a religious exemption, but his bishop won't allow it? I know that's a tough question. Bishop Strickland, maybe. <laughs> Don't blame you. Well, um, I will just speak from my own uh, prayer and experience. I think we have to remember that obedience is very important, uh, respect and obedience. Um, I've looked at a lot of the saints who endured a lot being obedient. Certainly, obedience to God is the ultimate obedience. Um, but I, that would be, for that priest, I would say respect and obedience to his bishop, but also to look for the ways to, to find a way to be obedient to his beliefs as well. And to, you know, I've actually had priests contact me, even though their bishop said not to do it. Um, I mean, and it really depends on the entity, but I've given exemption letters for people outside the diocese. I have no real authority, but sometimes the I know that it's been successful. So that's what I would suggest to a priest who really wants to help someone is to refer them to a, a someone to get that exemption, but to not directly be in defiance of his bishop because he's got a responsibility of obedience Certainly, the, there has to be a balance. I mean, it's a difficult question, but mm -hmm. I mean, we can't be obedient to anyone, any human being in doing something that is immoral. And, and if it's a question of that priest himself being 
forced to get a vaccine, then that's when the obedience, in my opinion, would stop. I'd love to hear uh, Bishop Schneider's a, a better theologian than I am, for sure. But I'm just a, a country kid who believes deeply and loves Christ and his church. And I've studied enough to to know the truth. Yeah. So Bishop Schneider, any correction or any uh, nuance there that you would add? Well, I'm agreeing with you, Bishop Strickland. I think you gave a very balanced and prudent answer. And I would also say that, uh, I repeat what you, what you said, to refer these priests, the priests to other possibilities to, to obtain this document. Uh, but when it will come the case of himself, that the bishop will force him, then I think he has to refuse, because this is already a, a question of, very important question of his conscience. Uh, and therefore, he can refuse, even when he will lose uh, some faculties. Uh, so he can continue to, to be a priest, and God will provide for him in some way. Bishop Strickland, our, our Bishop Athanasius Schneider, you were a, a very big blessing to a friend of mine who's a w very famous doctor here in Southern California, a heart surgeon, that uh, you were able to sign one of these exemptions for him. And as a matter of fact, it got him back into the hospital to do heart surgery. And uh, they were amazed that somebody halfway around the world signed this letter for this doctor. Like, who the heck? How do you know this guy? My point <laughs> is, thank you for going the extra mile, like half around, halfway around the world to do that. And um, yeah, so thank you for that. Um, Bishop, Strick, uh, Bishop uh, Athanasius Snyder, I know uh, because of your work with the... Uh, the order that you're in, you have a great devotion to the holy angels. When we come back from the break, I'd like to ask you to talk about how the holy angels play a role in helping us fall deep in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church, and how we should all have great devotion to our guardian angel. As we say, the unemployment rate for guardian angels is way too high. Let's put them to work. And we come back, Bishop Snyder will tell us how to put our angels to work for us. Stay with us, family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871. 
because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Absolutely. Terry and Jesse and Bishop Strickland and Bishop Athanasius Schneider. Jess, we like to say we're too blessed to be stressed. We're too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires because our hope is in Jesus Christ. And I gave a little teaser, Jess, about the angels and how they work, how to collaborate with the angels. And Bishop Schneider, uh, well, I'll give you an example. Right now, we have several people in church behind me. This is a picture of our chapel before the Blessed Sacrament. They're praying, and they're all consecrated to their guardian angel and to all the angels. These are people who are deeply in love with Jesus. And Bishop Schneider, you have a great love for your guardian angel because of the order that you are, are in. Can you share with us why, how, why it's so important to collaborate with your angel in the work of salvation. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ said in the gospel mm -hmm. that the angels of the little ones, and we are all the little ones, <laughs> are continuously contemplating the face of God in heaven. Mm -hmm. So this is the characteristic of the angels to be in the presence of God. Mm. And therefore, it is so important for us to, to try to live more in the presence of God. So we are more uh, <laughs> gaining the, the, the conscience of the eternal life of the supernatural world and to be in the presence of God. This is the first. And the second, that the angels, all their... Uh, essence and nature mm -hmm. are claiming the glory of God. So this is the essence of the angels. They are singing holy, holy, holy. We know the prayer of the angel Sanctus. And, and so they say, full is heaven and earth of thy glory. And this should move us in all our thinking, in all our working to promote to, to the glory of God. And therefore, and the other characteristic of the holy angels, uh, they are um, fighters for Christ. Amen. Because they are fighting against the evil spirits. So we, we are surrounded by the temptations and by the, uh, of the evil spirits. And therefore, we pray that our Father will deliver us from the evil or the evil one. And St. Peter is saying, the devil is circling you like a lion, no? yeah. and to be watchful. And therefore, we have to invoke the holy angels as our protectors. And our, but ultimately, I would say the holy angels are our best friends our best companions, uh, co-adorers, co-fighters for Christ. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Bishop Joseph Strickland? <laughs> Gosh, just a big amen. amen. That's what I, was thinking. You're, I figured you'd say amen. And just the, the note, everybody, we have a show, Bishop Strickland Hour, on Virgin Most Powerful every Tuesday, so I want to make a plug for that. If you want to hear Bishop Strickland every week talk about the Catechism of the Catholic Faith, and also his tweets. We can do that every Tuesday on Virgin Most Powerful. Jess, what's the next question, brother? Yeah, so so bishops, what is the best course of action for parishes? I'll, I'll, I'll ask Bishop Strickland. Yeah. The best course of action for parishes in America, if there's another situation where the government closes down the churches again, what are we going to do, Bishop? Do we close down again and deny everybody the sacraments? Bishop Strickland first. Then Bishop Snyder. Just say no. <laughs> I love it. That's ambitious. I don't think we need a lot of drama. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but right. we need to just say, no, we're not as bishops, as priests, and as laity. We need to say, no, we're not closing the churches. Amen. And if it brings us to the point of 
you know, them doing something drastic, so be it. But as we were talking about, yes, uh, I, I believe being forced to take a vaccine that's contrary to your conscience for any reason, I believe is wrong. But being forced to not be with the angels saying, holy, 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 being forced to not worship God in his house, we've got to simply say, no, you can't force us to not go worship God. And, you know, if they destroy the churches, we gather anyway. I mean, the church is our faith, most importantly, but our temples are important because they remind us of the faith and they are places where we worship God and give glory to God like the angels. So, and I think finally, I would say, let's remember in any family or any individual Catholic or any priest, we need to remember the angels are with us when we say no to that sort of um, interference with what, what our obligation is to, to worship God and give glory to God in this life. So just say no. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop Athanasius, do you have any further comments on that? <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Bishop. I'm so happy to hear this. And I would only to add, if this will come, that the government will close by force our churches, then we have to be creative and to, to find our other means and to go to a kind of clandestine uh, meetings. And the church has a lot of experience in clandestine meetings. <laughs> Bishop Athanasius yeah. Snyder, our chapel that's behind me is the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina. It was the first Catholic church in Covina built in 1911. And we own the chapel, so we never closed our doors because uh, people would come in and pray and they before the Blessed Sacrament. They'd be in tears because they couldn't go into their regular churches to pray. And yes, we paid a price for that, and we're willing to do that again. And so I happen to agree with both of you that we say, uh, no, we're not going to close our churches. So thank you. Jess, we have another question. You want to ask this next one? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard from some wonderful bishops that the Great Reset— yep. Uh, Fauci, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, this whole Great Reset is nothing but the imposition of communism, power, control over the people. Uh, my question to you, bishops, is uh, do you believe that the Great Reset is the imp imposition of communism, the infiltration of communism? And who do you think is behind the Great Reset? Is it the Masons? Is it the, is it the Marxists? Is it the modernists? What do you say, bishops? Or, or is it Satan? Or all of the above. Go ahead. Or all of the above. <laughs> yeah. I'll let Bishop Schneider go with that one. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it seems that we are going to a worldwide uh, neo-communist uh, dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Because what does mean communism? Communism means that you are that they are doing all the same, so that the society is becoming uniform. I lived in the communism, so always we have to have to the same thinking, to have the same customs, so you lose your individuality. This is a, a, a characteristic of all communist systems, that you lose your privacy also. So now with this, Green Pass and all, we are completely controlled and using our privacy. And then you are losing your property also. This is communism. And now we lost with the mandate vaccinations, we are losing even the property of our own body. So you cannot more decide about your body. The government will decide. He is becoming the owner even of your body. And to me, this is the last uh, stage uh, of the communism also. And then communism also means uh, atheism. Uh, so to, how is it, to expelling God from the life completely, or to substitute God with another uh, fake religion. And now we have it seems the, the, the health 
is becoming a god, the health. So you have to sacrifice for the health, even the innocent babies and killing them and abusing, marketing their body parts. So it become, and even without a vaccination, for example, now in Austria, the bishops from Austria recently, I think yesterday, they established that uh, to go to church can only vaccinated people. So no. uh, they, are not, they will not be entering the church more. Uh, and so, I mean, this is this worldly uh, religion style uh, re of health religion is ever more becoming uh, spreading. And so substituting the true religion. And therefore, I think it is really, uh, as our lady in Fatima, she told that Russia will spread its errors all over the world. Russia, it's a, co a code word for communism, I mean. And now we are witnessing that, that the humanity is it's not converting, but becoming ever more sinful and revolting against God. And so the, the communism is growing. And therefore, we have to resist. We have to, to build up a worldwide uh, network of resistance, political, social, and Christians against the new neo-communist dictatorship. We have to name this by the name. We, we have to say you are the neo-communists because all these mandates and controls is uh, leading us, it's reminding us the communist ideology. We have to say this. Of course, I think that ultimately uh, there must be, even from common sense, a central, powerful elite uh, which is coordinating these actions. It is impossible that worldwide uh, equal coordination without a central power commando. Bishop Strickland, or Bishop Athanasius, please, I want to hear more about this on the other side of the break. As you are, I don't want to get you short on that. That's a good answer, and let's continue with that when we come back. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. We have Bishop Joseph Strickland. We have Bishop Athanasius Snyder here. The special edition. Stay with us, family. We'll let Bishop Athanasius continue with his answer when we come back. Tummy. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance, or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org, or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-life across America, the Billboard people. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877 877- 
543-3871 because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back. We've got Bishop Athanasius Schneider, Bishop Strickland, Jess Romero, and myself. Remember, after this last break, we're going to continue on with a little podcast. We have a couple good questions to ask both bishops regarding Archbishop Fulton Sheen and another topic on the Holy Eucharist. Bishop Athanasius Snyder, I kind of cut you off because of the break. You were talking a little bit about the Great Reset, who's behind it. Please continue, because I loved what you were saying. Yes, no, we are observing this uh, um, uniform coordination mm -hmm. of these COVID rules, let us say, mm -hmm. so strictly. It is really a central action. It cannot be simply. Therefore, this is a demonstration that there must be a central elite group, politically powerful, who is coordinating mm -hmm. our COVID dictatorship, let us say now. And therefore, I think that we have to encourage politicians and even some countries to make a, a, a opposition, another form of maybe coalition of other governments mm -hmm. who will say, no, we will not introduce the world neo-communist system in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that maybe Hungary or such countries, uh, they could make a coalition with other countries. And inside our countries, we have to build up a political, to my opinion, opposition, clearly anti-communist, anti-dictatorial uh, powers. And so I hope that it could be awakened in the conscience in the Western world. Well said. I can tell you one person who'd do that, and I know you don't want to get political, but Jesse, I'm going to say it. Here's a, here's a president of the United States that said, when we see the image of a baby in the womb, we glimpse the majesty of God's creation. I can guarantee you Mr. Trump would not support this global program that's going on right now. So that's just my personal opinion. I had to throw it in, Jess. I know you wrote a book on it, but hey, hey, uh, <laughs> Jesse, this is a question that you've asked, and I think you I mean, both bishops should answer this. Let's go to Bishop Strickland. Are we living the approved Marian prophecies of Akita, Japan, where we see bishop versus bishop, cardinal versus cardinal? Bishop Strickland? Well, I don't know if I have the answer to that uh, completely, but I believe— as we've been talking, just as we're talking now, mm -hmm. as people of faith, yeah. we have to recognize that we are to embrace the good, the true, the beautiful. We are to glorify God. And we're seeing so much that opposes that in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, Christ himself tells us yeah. only the Father knows when creation will come to an end. Um, uh, one of the best answers I've heard, and it, this was a couple of years ago, because we've been in serious turmoil for several years yeah. now, even pre-COVID. This was pre-COVID, but people were asking a monk that I visited with, is it the end of the world? We always have to look to Christ, and what did he tell them? He said, only the Father knows. Um, but what this monk said that I thought was a very good answer that we all need to take to heart is it could be the end of your world. Um, and that, I believe, is the spiritual focus we need to remember. We are seeing, sadly, um, too much division in the church. What did um, St. Jo Josephat died for? Unity. And unity is only in Jesus Christ. Amen. He is unity incarnate. He is truth incarnate. He is the divine son of God. And so any effort to unify that isn't centered on Christ is, is not going to ultimately unify. We definitely need unity in the among the hierarchy of the church. Um, I'm going to the bishops meeting here in the United States. Um, Bishop Schneider said that he is 
general secretary of his bishops conference there. Um, there's a lot of disunity here in the United States. There are different voices, but ultimately as people of faith, we know the only voice of truth is God and his son has spoken, his incarnate son. That's where, you know, and we're talking a lot about the Eucharist at this meeting. Yeah. That's why it's so essential that we believe that the Eucharist is the real presence and that we op we live accordingly. And that is where our unity will flow from. <clears throat> but there's too much uh, compromise. There's too much, at least, you know, I don't want to, to judge any bishop's faith, but we're not hearing a support for the the right of conscience and the free will and belief in in the the real presence um that that we should be hearing so sometimes i'm accused of of causing disunity if we're not following the word of god if we're not following christ and living in his light that's where the disunity comes from let us all look to christ so um I think that yes, we're seeing some of some signs of those uh, messages from various apparitions, Akita that you mentioned. We're seeing some very sad signs of what that speaks of. What, how that all fits together, I don't claim to understand at all. But we do need to see the signs and be. I'm reminded myself, and I'm sure Bishop Schneider is. We must seek unity, but we must seek real unity always in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesse? Yeah, uh, Bishop Snyder, do you want to comment on Akita Japan? Uh, you've, have you read that prophecy, and do you think we're living out that prophecy right now? Well, I, I'm uh, agreeing what Bishop Strickland said, and uh, well, this is uh, a fact which cannot be denied that now so many con contradictory uh, words and behaviors in, within the bishops group in the church, this is uh, an evidence and we have to pray uh, for unity, for truth, in the truth, this cannot be other. Right. And therefore, uh, I think we have to implore uh, divine intervention that, that the Pope, who is the center of the unity among the bishops, uh, this is his divine uh, mission to be the visible sign of unity among the bishops. I think that ultimately it must come from the Pope, and the Pope must unite all the bishops in the truth, in the clarity, and this will come. We have to pray for this. Yes. Bishop Schneider, what, what's a bit, you, uh, as you've lived through this, so I want to ask you, what do you think is the bigger threat right now, radical Islam or communist infiltration into our government and into our church? I think that is more the danger of the communist infiltration in the government structures and in the life of the church also. Uh, the, the Islam, it is, it is not penetrating our life in the church, I mean, and uh, also politically, because they know when Islam becomes politically powerful, then we will have uh, to obey the Sharia law, law, and this, the Western people and politicians, they don't want this, because then they have to... Uh, to, how do you say, to abandon all these immoral stuff, the homosexual agenda and so on, Islam will never permit this, when they will be in power, I mean. And therefore, I think that uh, the Islamization of Europe is a tool which these neo-communist powers are, are using simply to uh, de-Christianization of Europe and our society. But in the same time, I think that the presence, the, the greater presence of Islam in our Western societies 
they could also be a chance to evangelize them, to, to, to proclaim them Jesus Christ. And there are, thanks be to God, some conversions. Mm -hmm. And then simply to, to, to witness our Christian faith. I want to ask this to both bishops. Bishop Archbishop Fulton Sheen said in the early 70s that the laity is going to save the church. And I wanted to ask both of you to empower us. Who, most of the people watching and listening to this show are lay people. Can you, in the in two minutes, and then we'll add after the show, we'll continue on with a little bit of a podcast because I got a couple more questions. But do you think Bishop Sheen was spot on when he called on the laity to get involved with you know some of the solutions in the in the uh, in the church? That's my question, uh, Bishop Strickland. What's your take on Sheen's qu uh, quote? Well, I would absolutely agree, and, and thankfully I see evidence of that, um, and I would imagine Bishop Schneider sees the same there. I mean, the two of you, you're laymen, yeah. and working and bold enough to say things that are very politically incorrect, and you've made sacrifices in your own professional lives because you're standing for the truth. There are many lay voices out there that are strong and are great institutes and great organizations that are developing great movements of, of lay men and women. Um, so, and I think it's, it's just for me kind of intuitive that absolutely. I mean, we bishops are really very much a minority of, of the, the body of Christ that is the church. The great body of Christ is all the baptized, and we are here to serve the body. We are servants of all the flock, um, and that's what we have to remember, to be humble servants. But I think it's it, it makes a lot of sense to me that, of course, laity have always been a great strength of the church, and when the shepherds are, are not united and are weaker than we should be as a body, um, the laity will stand up because the truth, as I've said to people, the truth wins. Amen. We have to trust in the power of the truth. We're going to have to end this hour show, but we're going to do a podcast. For those who are listening, go to vmpr.org, and you can listen to the rest of this interview. That's virginmostpowerfulradio.org. And I've got some more questions regarding the Holy Eucharist, as Bishop Joseph Strickland constantly says, you know, we got to believe in the real presence. And so we're going to talk to both bishops after this break. Give us a minute and then go to vmpr.org to listen to the remaining part of this interview. And share this with your friends because this whole point is to inspire people to fall deep in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Jess, what state should we be living in? We end every show this way. Let's live in a state of grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. Pray your rosary every day. Read your Bible every day. Go to Mass as often as possible. Be holy or die trying. Amen. Folks, we'll be back after this quick break with the podcast. Go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org, and we'll look forward to getting the rest of the questions answered then. May God richly bless you and your family.